Today I wanted to speak about something a little different. Will population decline halt climate change? And I don't normally talk about climate change because I'm not an expert in the field and can't render an expert opinion. But the other day I was watching an interview by Daryl Bricker who but wrote a book about population decline. And he made some comments about climate change and population decline and that climatologists don't take population decline into account. So I thought that was a really interesting point and that they should. And so I thought perhaps I'd do a video about it and then maybe some people would think about taking population decline into account. And if you're not familiar with what's happening with the population is fertility rates are dropping all over the world in particularly in the developed countries, the high income, upper middle income, and lower middle income countries are all seeing fertility rates fall. And we're definitely gonna see fertility rates fall in the remaining countries where they're still high. And they tend to fall naturally as women become increasingly educated. You send them to school, they get a good job, they have smartphones, they commute with, communicate with other women, and they decide they don't want to have as many children. They realize that they can have a better quality of life with fewer children. And that's happening everywhere. And that's great. But it's causing the population to shrink, which in terms of earth science is probably a healthy thing that we may get to sustainable levels as I'm going to talk about. Right now the population is about 7.8 billion. And if you look at estimates from the UN, they expect there to be 9.8 billion by 2050 and then 10.9 or close to 11 billion by 2100. And so if climatologists take anything into account, they use this mean line from the United Nations. The problem is, if you've been studying population de demographics like I have, you know that the United Nations has been wrong consistently over the last 20 years in overestimating population growth. And generally, if you look at the individual countries, the population growth tends to follow the 80th percentile or 85th percentile line. So significantly below what they predict. And it's generally because fertility rates are falling more rapidly than they predict. And so Daryl Bricker and I both estimate that the population is going to peak at about 9 billion people around the year 2050 and then begin declining. And by the end of this century, it'll be back down to a level close to where it is today or lower. I really think it'll be in the 7 to 7.5 billion range by the end of the century. And one of the great things climate-wise is that most of that decline is going to be in the wealthier countries that currently give off the most carbon emissions. And so we're going to see a drop in carbon emissions due to changes in habits, hopefully, and also due to changes in the number of people, particularly in, in Asia. Uh, Asia is going to see the greatest drop in population with China leading the way. I expect China, whose population is currently overestimated by their own government, but experts think that the population is closer to 1.3 billion, not 1.4. And most of those missing 100 million people are in the lower age groups from basically when the one-child policy started, they were over-reporting births, saying that, and saying their fertility rate was 1.7 or 1.6 with the vast majority of women violating the one-child policy. But in reality, based on other observers' estimates, it was probably closer to 1.3 most of that time. So the population's a lot smaller, and there are a lot fewer women to give birth. So their population will likely, in my estimation, hit around 450 
million by the end of this century. So losing close to 800 million people. Uh, so it's a, a big deal and hopefully their pollution will drop significantly, which will be good for everybody. Uh, so, but if you translate it even further out, by the year 2150, it should, the population should fall to four to four and a half billion people. And by the year 2200, down to two and a half to three billion. And by 2300, it could fall to a billion or one and a half billion. And this goes back to another issue I have with the UN projections, which generally have fertility rates rebounding in the later half of this century for no good reason. And I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think, and evidence is bearing this out, that once fertility rates drop below 1.6, then they tend to not recover that even if you give women incentives to have more children, that there are other factors at play that make them not want to have more children. So fertility rates are not going to increase without drastic steps like baby factories being put into place or just paying women to have babies as a career choice. Those types of things are, would be necessary. So I really do expect the population to continue to fall at its rate that we're seeing and countries that have a 1.3 fertility rate will probably continue that for the next couple centuries. There may be some groups where they have more children now and they still will have more children and those groups will end up becoming larger as a percentage and then so I do think it will settle out somewhere maybe around a billion but but who knows uh, I certainly won't be around to see it but the issue with climate change is CO2 gets absorbed into the ocean and other places and so it goes away and the half-life is estimated to be about 120 years so by 2150, about half of the atmospheric CO2 we have today, 420 parts per million, will be absorbed. So, so about 210 parts per million will remain. Well, and that's an issue. And then on the top of that 210 parts per million, you have all the emissions we have between now and then that stay in the atmosphere. And those, some of that gets reabsorbed too along the, the line. So your estimate has to include this loss over time plus how many emissions we have now and how much we have into the future. But by 2150, the population will be roughly half what it is today and hopefully half is polluting. Uh, you can put your number on it, whatever it happens to be. So the human impact on the earth will be much lower in 2150 than it is today. And then by 2200, the impact may be consistent with what it was in 1800, which is when we first passed the 1 billion population mark. So the earth may have a chance to recover over time and the earth recovers great. I went to Pripyat in where Chernobyl is and got to see just in 30 years how much nature grows back if we don't mess with it. And so we have an opportunity to allow earth to become healthy as we farm less land and live in less land we can allow there to be more natural areas where the earth can return to its normal self and also plant and animal life. So I think that longer term, if we look out a century or more, 
that humans will have the opportunity to live more in tune with nature on Earth and have less of an impact. And so climatologists need to take that into account. And now that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be big changes in the next 50 years because we have a 50 year window where there's appear to be changes going on like sea level rise and warming. And to the effect that we control that, it may be mitigated somewhat by the middle of the next century. And that's just all I wanted to say. Uh, like I said, I'm not a climate expert, so I haven't done any actual modeling based on these estimates, but I would hope that someone who, who is a climatologist would take that into account when making their estimates. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit the like button and share it with your friends, and subscribe for my next ones. I promise I'll get back on a physics topic next time. And so, thanks for watching.